Hi, welcome to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. I'm Raquel Villanueva here with engineer Chris Aceves. And we are actually maskless right now because we are fully vaccinated and took it off for this live specifically. Exactly. And behind us is the model surface water and ocean topography satellite right. known as SWAT. Yep, that's correct. And it is set to launch about a year from now. And Chris is here to answer any questions you might have about the spacecraft. Definitely. And if you have a question you'd like to ask, use the hashtag tracking world water or leave your comments in the chat box. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Oh yeah, I'm excited about this. Yeah, and can you tell us what is the purpose of the SWAT mission? Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, SWAT stands for surface water and ocean topography. It measures all visible water. Uh, it's, gonna it's gonna be helping all researchers and scientists to track volume of water, uh, understand the effects of weather, climate and ocean lakes and rivers. Uh, some additional data that's going to be collecting is some small scale ocean occurrence, which will be supporting our real time marine uh, operations. And you mentioned before there's other uses for the data too. Yeah, definitely. I'm super excited for what society is going to be using this for uh, improving computer models in, um, <clears throat> in monitoring uh, drought conditions, but also uh, in, in uh, improved floor uh, flood forecast. And I have a question about your role. So you are a systems integration and launch engineer. Can you explain what you do for the mission? Yeah, definitely. So I'm currently, so I've been with the project for over four years now. I'm currently the lead electrical engineer. Uh, what that means is currently as during our test now and any future tests we have going on before launch, I need to make sure that all hardware, all science instruments are working properly. I work uh, closely with the system engineers and making sure that we're meeting all the requirements, but also working with our scientists and verifying that our science data being collected is uh, it's all healthy. So a lot of testing. Yeah, no, a lot of testing coming up and it's, uh, it's exciting. And can, can you kind of walk us through the SWAT model and kind of explain how it all works? Like, is this to scale? Yeah, no, it's not to scale. Uh, this is a one third scale model, so it's definitely much larger. Uh, there's two main parts. Uh, that's important here. We have the bus, which is this top box here, and then we have this payload box. The box is, uh, it's really the brain of this satellite. Uh, it does all the commanding, it records all the health uh, data of this satellite, which tells us if the, if the satellite's healthy. Uh, it also has proportion keeping it in its orbit. Uh, it also is really the battery that powers up all of our science instruments. So it's definitely a huge part of this satellite. Uh, then, we, then we have this payload. Um, that carries all of our science instruments. Um, yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about the instruments yeah, right here? Yeah, definitely. So here we have uh, this cool reflector here. It's, uh, it's an AMR, which stands for the Advanced Microwave uh, Radiometer. Uh, and what this does is it measures all the water vapor between this satellite and Earth. Uh, then we have uh, the X-band antenna here, which I think is the coolest antenna. And, and <laughs> reason, one of the reasons why I'm the, I'm the cognizant engineer of this uh, satellite and um, what that means is I need to know the ins and outs of the satellite. So usually anyone has any questions on this, they come to me first. Um, and then we have, uh, these other two satellites here are part of our French, our partnership around the world. Uh, they are from the French space agency, CANES. So we have this cool looking laser beam looking satellite. It's called the Do uh, Doris. And what Doris stands for, and it's an it's extremely long name, uh, Dor uh, Doppler Orbital Graphy Radio Position Integrated Satellite. That's a mouthful. Yeah, no, it's uh, not something we say every day. We just call it Doris. I like Doris. All right. Yeah. And what this does, is it actually gives us the positioning of the satellite uh, while it's in orbit. Uh, so we, at all times, know exactly where the satellite is. And what about this instrument? Yeah, so this is the nadir altimeter. And what this does is measures the height of the, sorry, measures the height of the water. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Something I do want to bring up is that all these instruments do work uh, work together. For example, this nadir altimeter dish will measure the height of the water, but there is, there is interference sometimes with the water vapor in between the satellite and the water, and that's where the AMR comes in. We have those we have those measurements already, so we're able to extract that data to get a better uh, measurement of the water height. Uh, and that covers all the instruments that you see here. What about these beams then up here? Yeah, down over here? No, so this is where it gets real exciting. Uh, this is really the Karen module, and what Karen stands for is a K-band radar inferometer. And uh, got Karen and Doris then. Yeah, we have Karen and Doris. Um, they get along pretty well. Uh, so we have these two booms, and th these are reflectors. And right here, you can't see on the other end are uh, the feed horns. And these actually shoot out a beam to these reflectors, and these reflect down into the uh, earth, hitting the ocean or hitting anything that it sees. 
and then it bounces back to the opposite reflectors and they're collecting that data. And that data is then stored and they transferred over to the X-band antenna and then transferred over to uh, our ground stations for our scientists to review. And you were saying that the French Space Agency, CNES, um, is helping. Is there any other international yeah. collaborators? Yeah, there's uh, the Canadian Space Agency and the uh, UK Space Agency. And uh, they are, so there are boxes that you not, you're not able to see them, but they, there are boxes that supports our Karen uh, instrument that they're inside. So, um, so it's really an international effort. Yeah, no, it's world, yeah, and working with all these partnerships, uh, it's, it's exciting to have all these engineers and we're all here for the same cause, that's great. Big global team effort. Yes. Now, those are all the questions I had for you. Uh, I'm gonna go online and get some questions. If you have a question you'd like to ask, use the hashtag tracking world water. And first up we have, let's see, Astro KV812 on Instagram asks, what is new about SWAT? And that's different from earlier missions we had for the ocean. It's gonna be the high definition. Uh, we're, we're measuring to a scale that hasn't been done before, which is gonna help, help, as I mentioned before, society get a better uh, measurements to improve uh, the computer modeling for uh, uh, drop conditions, but also improve flood forecasting. Uh, but the, the, the fine tuning of uh, high quality we're gonna be getting, that's, that's what this brings, that, that uh, definition, that quality. That quality there. And yeah. Hugo on Facebook asks, how small a body can this measure? Uh, so as mentioned just right earlier, uh, the, the high definition of this, it's going to be small. It's, it's able to measure ponds, uh, small lakes. Um, not, I wouldn't say it's going to measure the water in your backyard. Not a little puddle? It's no. Be the puddle. Uh, okay. that's, that's not what we're trying to measure, but it's supposed to measure all the little small river streams uh, that are around the world. And Divion uh, Instagram asks, how would you be measuring water through the distance from space? Sorry, can you repeat that? Sure, like how would you measure water through the distance from space? Oh, yeah, so no. how does this kind of beat yeah. down and work? So as I mentioned, the Karen, it stands for, it's a, it's a K band frequency. There's a reason why we chose that, that type of frequency. And once it interacts and hits water, that frequency, the, the speed of that wave changes. And once it reflects back and we see that change of wave, that tells us that's exactly um, the depth of how much water there is. So mm -hmm. that information of that frequency is what is providing us that, uh, that information from, from Earth. Okay, well, thanks for that question. Now, uh, sorry on Facebook ads. Uh, how does this measure the water that you know is accurate? How does it measure the water and know it's accurate? Yeah. Yeah, uh, again, with, with the K band B, that frequency, uh, it, it'll know if it hits land, uh, water, uh, any type of soil. Uh, it's going to know the difference between water and soil. And once we see that difference in the data, we'll be able to know exactly what, what's the river. Ocean, lake, ponds, and we end up. Yeah, it needs to be real detail. And then, um, how much time will it take to complete the whole mission? This is AGT Unknown on Instagram. Yes, for mission, it's uh, it's a three year mission. Uh, but from the previous mission, we haven't passed with other projects here at DPL. Uh, they've always surpassed uh, their lifespan. So we're really hoping this goes five, six, even eight years, uh, giving us data uh, for many years to come. And then we have Adam Elodari, I hope I said your name right, on Instagram. Uh, big, well, it's like, how big is this model? If we are seeing one third. Yeah, no, it's, uh, imagine an original yellow school bus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite large. Uh, and then with the solar array panels, imagine a 737 Boeing plane wingspan. So it's it's a large uh, spacecraft uh, to be next to it. And CJ on Instagram asks, what are the main components that are the most important? Yeah, no, it's, it depends who you're asking. <laughs> well, for you, what is it? Uh, I think everyone's going to agree that it's really uh, Karen. Uh, that's what's uh, the heart of this uh, satellite. It's measuring uh, the water. It's going to give us a lot of patterns, a lot of information that we're going to need. But again, if, if you're asking me, uh, I'm going to choose the X-band antenna. Uh, again, uh, without this, we're not, we're not going to be receiving any of this data. If this goes down... Uh, uh, it's not gonna, we're not going to be able to collect any of the science data that's being measured. How's Doris going to feel about all this? Yeah, no, Doris is not going to like that, <laughs> but uh, Karen, Karen's the lead lady here. Uh, she's important, too. <laughs> no, we'll she's see. important as well. And then uh, we have Jessica on Facebook who asks, where in the world is the satellite being built? Currently, it's in France. Uh, this payload part started here at JPL with the instruments. Uh, the, the French uh, space agency then came over, brought their instruments, got integrated here in uh, JPL Pasadena. Uh, this was then sent over to France, which is currently then being integrated into this bus. 
And uh, once it's fully built and complete, we then bring it back uh, towards the end of this year for launch here in, uh, in California. And uh, Will you be going back and forth to France then? Yeah, so I was there this, this oh. year for a few months. Uh, we're currently in the middle of doing a lot of environmentals on the mechanical side. And I'll be going back this January to continue electrical testing. And uh, I, I'm one of the lucky few to be part of the, the launch team that will be in, uh, in the, the French Space Agency in Toulouse, France and actually seeing uh, live, live information, live uh, coming down to earth, verifying that our instruments are working properly and give it the go to you know, begin collecting science data. Yeah, it'll be a lot of international travel in your yeah. future. So I want to know personally, what is your favorite part of working on this mission? Uh, my favorite part is uh, the team. Uh, like, as is mentioned, this is a worldwide effort here and being able to work with all these different engineers, uh, there's always going to be hurdles to get through and getting all our heads in this together with the same goal, with the same achievement. Uh, we, it's, it's amazing how well we work together to get, get through these hurdles. Yeah, great answer. And that's kind of all the time we have for questions today. Thank you so much for joining us, Chris. No problem. And now, SWAT is being jointly developed, like you said, by NASA and the French Space Agency, CNES, with contributions from... Yeah, the Canadian Space Agency? Canadian and the UK Space Agency. They're both a uh, part, and there's uh, hardware and boxes inside the Karen that they support. And uh, so, yeah, so there's a total of four of us. And then it's scheduled to launch no earlier than November 2022. That is correct. It's getting close here. No, it's getting real close. <laughs> and for more information on SWAT, you can visit swat.jpl.nasa.gov. Thanks for watching, and thanks again, Chris. Thank you.